Hi everyone, welcome to Shooting for Scratch. I'm Pete and today's video is covering my second lesson with Dan Whitaker on Friday the 10th of February 2017. So without further ado, let's go and see how I got on. Dan's mecca of golf. I'm going to try and get a few more Trackman stats today just to uh, get a baseline for the numbers of my swing at the moment. Dan's going to just give me a quick recap of what we were doing in my last lesson. So uh, we were working on the left wrist set, weren't we, and yeah. getting my left shoulder behind the ball. Yeah. Um, and I'm interested to hear where we're going to go next from there and, and what you think we're going to be working on today. So first thing, obviously, I'm going to make sure that you've actually embedded that wrist set and the shoulder behind the ball. See what are the knock-on effects that's had within the swing to start with now. Obviously, we're going to record that in a minute. See where that is, see where the changes are, what it's looking like, and then from there ascertain whether that's had any positive effects on other areas and if not then we'll start working through what's going to be next in that list of changes for you. That sounds great. Your idea of getting behind the ball what we'd see is those hips are actually swaying across a fairly decent amount and at then what's happening is the upper body's going towards the target. So although you feel like your upper body is getting across it's your lower body that's doing a lot of that work for you. Okay so having a look at it from down the line right here we'd say that your wrist set is massively improved, okay? That's doing a really good job. And it, from this viewpoint on the down the line, it looks like the hips are turning loads, okay? But obviously we know that there is this sway in place. Now, when that sway is in place, what's happening is that upper body is gonna then start to lean towards the target a little bit this way. So it's leaning now. So then everything moves towards the target together. And then you have to back out of it a little bit, okay? So what you can see now is that then gets you a little bit steep coming down right into here. Okay, wrist set was obviously looking really good with it all. Maybe we could just shorten it just a tiny little bit at that top position. If I went like this and we put in, this is Manasero from when he was unreal playing as an amateur. Okay, so we can have a look at that pelvis. Okay. You know, I'm not advocating that we need to get it moving towards the target because we don't. But if we have a look at the vast difference in where he is at the top compared with where you are at the top. So you've moved a long way off your left line and moved through the right. Now, ideally, you want to at least stay against the one on the right. But if you just turned it away at the top, we should see a little bit of daylight between where the hip started at the top and where it finishes. Probably not as much as we're seeing right there, but there should see a little bit. Okay, If I went just... One more right here we'd see with Mike, which we'll take it to the start, Oops. which is here. Just get that line there. And we can see that as he turns back, there's like the tiniest little bit of daylight's come come from it there. Just a tiny little bit right there. Okay. So basically, in the last four weeks that I've been practicing getting my left shoulder behind the ball, actually what I'm doing is moving my hips, swaying them back away from the ball, but I'm not actually really rotating my upper body. Your upper body is actually moving across, to be fair, but the lower body is Getting swaying. too active. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So, this will be like the stage where it is, okay? And this right hip's going to turn back and you feel like right above Gene sits down to the floor. So slowly back for me. Okay. So you can now if you feel like that, <laughs> yeah. you feel like it's almost sitting back there, you yeah. feel a bit of load, a bit of tension in that yeah. right glute, you feel it. Yeah. Now if you can just get the upper body behind with it like that, that's now perfect. So that's the start again for me. But she's saying those wrists for the hang on a second. Flip the camera on so you can see those changes. Okay. So what you're gonna do is feel that right hip turning back, feel that wrist set, keep on. So, what you'll see here is that this elbow is just getting back, there you go, that's better. So, there you go, yeah. sit back a little there. Okay. Now, have a look at how that looks on the screen from there. It's the elbow, well, it looks so different behind the ball, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Thing, mate. Okay, so you're going to feel like this right bum cheek moves towards the target, is how it feels. Oh, this one? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so start taking that, there you go. There you go, so now the upper body is behind the ball now, isn't it? Yeah. Naturally, so that's getting that movement. So what you've been practising hasn't hurt you because you can see right there that you are getting behind the ball, mm -hmm. okay? It's just that what you've been doing is you've been losing tension in the lower body. Yeah. So everything's been moving across, yeah. okay? Okay, so back to the start again. 
Sitting that right, bum cheek behind you. Okay, watch that on the screen. <coughs> Way different. This looks really different. Just look at it like that. Oh. Yeah, it's better, looks, isn't it? Looks a lot more athletic, doesn't it? Way different. Right, let's go again, mate. Uh, one more practice for me, please. Go for it. What did that feel like? Yeah, it felt solid. I felt like I was actually uh, striking the ball out of the middle. Um, I felt as if I didn't have to back off as much, um, you know, through impact. Like I was coming more from behind the ball when I was actually hitting it. Um, my left heel really comes up off the floor, but I yeah. don't, you know, having watched people like Jack Nicklaus and Ben Hogan and so on, yeah, that's not really they get their left heel off the ground a lot, don't they? And, yeah. that, and that's so, so, uh, does that worry you? No. Fine. <clears throat> Try and turn that right hip a bit more behind you, mate. And sit yeah. down a bit more. Yeah. Yes, please, mate. More like that? Yes. I feel like I'm really sitting down. Yes, that's how I want you to feel. Okay. <laughs> Did you get the hip turning deep? I felt like I did. I felt like I wasn't swaying. I felt like I was getting my left shoulder behind the ball. That was really good. Okay, just one thing. You saw your right knee slightly going over the outside edge of the knee, over the outside edge of the ankle. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Just trying to feel like that knee just stays a little more there, so the okay. weight never goes over past the midpoint of the right foot. What I mean by that is. So rather than my right knee kicking out, yes. I want to keep it centralised. Okay, so imagine you've got a centre line over yeah. the middle of your foot, both of right. both feet there. Yeah. In the back swing, it never goes beyond the centre line of the right. So it moves through the middle of the right foot, never go over the outside edge of it. <coughs> does that make sense? It does. It does. I, I feel like I'm, I'm so about feel to like just... Like, like I'm going to just take a seat here. <laughs> Yes, there we go. Really good. Again for me. Without hitting? Yes, please. One more. Am I remembering to set my wrists? <coughs> yes, you're doing a good job on that form. Good. Right, let's try one. Shank. Make sure you now feel that that back gets behind it. So take it to the top of it. Okay, so do it again. Okay, now stop it down. Okay, so do it again for me. That's that top of the back from there. Do it again. Okay, get the start. Get the start on this. Oh, stop. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Sorry. Yeah. Turn those hips as much as you can. Because then from there, you'll be able to feel this. Now shift those hips towards me. There you go, then you can get that separation. Oh, okay. Right, but what you've been doing is this, take it towards the top. If you've been going like this towards me, mm -hmm. you, you can only come steep and then back out. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I've, so even with this sort of new position, I'm still... Wanting to go that way as you start to and finish. And then, have, so I'm still having to back Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Right. So okay. what you do is, okay, so take it towards that top of the back swing. Okay, so from there, now shift the pelvis out. There you go. That's how you'd start to transition from it. Okay. So I want to feel as if I'm pushing more of my right foot to shoot my hips to the left. Mm, I'd think about your left knee coming towards me and your left hip. You more go. like that. Okay. There you go. Okay. There you go. I'm going to say that. That's what I want you to make. Feel the difference? Yeah. So I get that the body behind it. Good. Now start now. Okay. Don't push up from the ground as much as that. Okay. It's only very, I only want you doing it like this for me, Pete. Okay. <clears throat> to fit in with what we're going to do, because this is going to fit into the next bit of getting in towards impact. So, because obviously you're starting to go that way just near the top of the back, and it's so linked to your transition. But we need to get rid of it. Obviously, yeah. now the hips are turning. If we just focus on the hips turning, you'll get that in about a week. So, you need to have the next bit of seeing how it all fits. To be honest, that feeling. <clears throat> 
I already get it. I can yeah. already feel it. You can't do it without thinking about it, yeah? No. So that's what I say. You have to do, I think you have to look really close to me. I have to do that without a lot of conscious thought in a week or ten days. Yeah. That hip shift, though, with the left knee, that doesn't feel natural. That's going to take me a bit longer. And that's because you, you know, we saw then that the hips are rotated and you go like this. Yeah. So how you can't... If you've got the upper body already over the lower body, how do you shift that lower body from there? You can't because your mass is already on top of it. So you have to back out of it like that. You think about it, you've already got your weight going through your left leg there, haven't you? Mm -hmm. I put more weight on my left there than I have on my right. Yeah. So I have to hit it, I have to push up so my arms can get out to the ball. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. So what you've got to do is, from that top, if you went like this, okay, so you've got one hand on the belly button, one hand in the middle of the sternum. At the top there, if you turn properly, the, the upper body, the sternum, is going to be a little bit further away from the target than the belly button. Then if I shift that way, this has gone more forwards than, than the stern. And from there, then I can rotate around to the finish. But okay. If I'm going like this, and I get to the top and go like that, and now, now they're in different spots, aren't they? Yeah. Now I've got to recover because my spine's got the angle away from the target, hasn't it? Yeah. But it can't be because I've already too far this way. Something's got to occur. So you have to happen. stand up to, to clear <clears throat> the arms through. Exactly. So right. if we can go, right, there, the body back, okay, the body turn, shift. Yeah. Push that lower body through just a little bit more for me. Good. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Very good. And again. Okay, so you didn't turn the hips as much there. See this wave again? Yeah. So, I know obviously you're starting to look at how you're going to fit the transition in, and you say you know you can already do that backswing. It's got to still be really conscious to you, okay? So you have to do this quite slowly, particularly in your practice yeah. swings. Yeah. Then, that transition is miles better. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to work at that little body because you can see that's already swaying towards the brick. Do you see it? Yeah, I do. There's a gap there. Yeah. Might work up. You've moved into it by quite a bit. Yeah. Okay, so you've got to feel like you're going the other way, and then it's going to be easier to push. Now what you do is you then redistribute yourself, which means everything has gone forward. Then you do an amazing transition. Because I won't want to do another one. <laughs> yeah, I'd be sick of it. <laughs> Dirty the light. Oh, is that better? Yeah. There you go. Now push the pelvis from there. Get the head back. There you go. Try do it again. That again for me. <laughs> Too many swing thoughts now. Oh shit, that's better, isn't it? Am I allowed to hit one? Go for it. Looking at that data, okay, it's not good. There's a lot of great stuff in that, okay? You can't get your plat much more neutral than this, only point one into out. It's virtually dead straight, so the ball flight is really, really straight, really neutral, okay? Club face 0.6 closed, very slightly left at the end, but it's only like 8 feet, so it's not a lot. Spin rate's relatively good, you know, it's in the mid-7s when using a 7 iron. Should that be good. higher or lower, ideally? Mm, that's good, right in the middle, okay? That, I'd probably get a tiny little bit lower, because I can get that to about 22 degrees, which will give it coming out a little bit more penetrating. Get that launch angle down a little bit because of that. But I would say that this as a set of data is really good, okay? okay? So, if you, if you said, well, you know, it'd almost be a case of, could you bottle that path and face relationship almost all the time? Then great. So, but it's going to be it's going to be hard to get a number that's like 0.1 every time. Okay. So I look to try and be a, like a tolerance of up to about two degrees, one way or the other. Two degrees give you one yard draw or fade, maybe yeah. one and a half yard, which is nothingness. Okay. I don't like to see a lot of movement. I like to see it almost as straight as possible. But I think if you play on really small numbers, it's really, really easy to get 
the shot dialed in and hit the ball, you know, really, really solid without a lot of curvature. So I'd say that this, if you want to, it draws, never getting any bigger than two. If you wanted to, it fades, never any bigger than two. Obviously, you want to be able to move it both ways, but you want to be able to have a set shot and say, right, one side of the course is out of play. So if you're having a bad day... I want to take the left side of the course out of play. Okay, so we want to move you to a cut then. And are you happy with making that yeah, no, change? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So obviously this will then start to move to about two degrees out to it. Speed, speed will actually probably go up, okay? And spin rate, if we can get spin rate to go stay the same, we'll go down a little bit and keep the club and, get the club and speed up, we'll get more distance. Yeah. So the phase not going to lose any, any power, it's just going to give you a bit more uh, consistency. If you want the left out of play, the fade's the way to go. Awesome. And in terms of club head speed? Pretty quick. 7.9, Your standard will probably be about 92, 93 for you, yeah. which is really good. It's those long iron shots where if I can really nail those into the green and just leave myself a putt or two putts, that's going to make a huge difference to my score. Okay. So that's technique? Yeah. That felt solid. That was a little cut. Was it? Because that mm -hmm. actually, through my hands, felt like a bit of a draw. Okay, look, club face was open. Okay, do it again, mate. I felt like I was steering it, turning it with my hands. Was that because my hands were getting a bit trapped? Yeah. So that's because I didn't really start with the with the left knee and the hip, 100%. isn't it? How did that feel? Uh, a little bit unbalanced, but it did feel like a a better shot, and yeah, it didn't feel as if my hands got trapped so much. So keep that hip rotation in that back twin for me. Do it again, mate. Take time. Oh. <laughs> oh, it just it feels so different. That's horrible. Right, no. I'm getting to that position and then... Okay. But that's the bit that's going to change the timing. Yeah. Okay. But but you're also speeding up the swing. See, at like 90 to 91 was I? mile an hour. Oh, yeah, God, do you know, that was a much faster swing, wasn't it? Yeah. Without even thinking so, about that. So the chances of... Getting that transition changed about yeah. speed, I'd say, pretty slim. Yeah, no, I would agree with you. And do you know what? I wasn't consciously trying to whack it. Yeah. For some reason, I was probably just. Like, yeah, and some of it's, it's the new stuff, so you're just trying to fit it in. All right, let me try and consciously slow this right down, and I'm just going to play like a sort of half punch shot. Then. Perfect. I'll right, see what I do. Is that the result on the screen? Yeah. That's, see, that's really pushy and horrible as well. But, what, but here my question is, are you thinking about the outcome of the shot or are you thinking about what you did? I was thinking about what I was doing. Okay, so... The outcome of the shot actually surprised me. It didn't feel like that. That was the best technical golf swing. It was the worst result. Yeah, no, what, I like that. So, so what, I'm, what I'm asking is, your instant reaction was... I'm basing the quality of the swing on the result. On the result. Yeah. So basically, you're, you, you, you give your swing changes an emotional response, don't you? If it's a good shot, you think, that must have been good. Do you know what? I actually, I actually try not to. However, clearly I do. I would say you do. Yeah. Okay, Pete, so good session today. So what we've been working at first off is trying to get those hips to rotate back a little bit more in this direction in the back swing obviously while that shoulder is still moving across so we can see right here that you are definitely doing a better job with that right now so it's looking fantastic as we said earlier keep our eye on that wrist set so that's obviously getting good we're getting the club into a really good position at the top so it's in a very very different position at the top of the back swing now what we then do next is going to try and feel that this upper body stays behind the ball while that lower body goes forward you can see that head's wanting to go forwards a little bit 
little drill that you could do for this just at home without a ball would be just in front of the mirror and what you do is you take it to the top of the backswing and at that top of the backswing here you'll make sure your head's staying still and you feel that the knee the hip and then the shoulder all move away from the center point of the body which is the chin see the head's going to stay still here and that lower body goes forwards left shoulder clears head scared can stay back so this will get that feeling for it and you can maybe even do it with one hand on the sternum and one on the belly button so you can see how that lower body will shift forwards first okay so i just had a couple of questions just to very quickly end this yeah. session if that's okay with you dan so um can you just describe the difference between shoulder turn and sway okay so in the context of your swing please okay, so for you Okay, you were getting swaying of the lower body this way, okay, as you're still rotating the shoulders, okay, I like to think about the shoulder moving across whilst the lower body is rotating, so the pressure stays through the middle of the right foot, it turns back, for you, feeling is that it's moving towards the target, it isn't, but it's what it, how it feels, which then allows that upper body to move across, if you think about that lower body, if it sways, your upper body's going to have a tendency to want to tilt. So the answer to that question is, in your concept, if you get the hips going and swaying across, you're going to tilt. Whereas if you rotate the upper body, you have the lower body, the upper body will get behind the ball. Perfect. Okay, so um, would you describe these as quite minor or major swing changes? In the context of you, probably feel massive. Yeah, they do. Some other people who are maybe a little bit newer to the game or slightly higher handicapped, these won't feel as big as they are to you. Obviously, you've ingrained a lot of your stuff been playing for quite a few years okay so um obviously we had quite a long gap between my first lesson and this one about four weeks i was concerned about the fact that i was losing momentum in my practice um, and i was worried that i was starting to introduce mistakes into my swing around the things that you had originally asked me to practice so yeah. um what would you say is the optimum time for lessons for I somebody like, i like two to three weeks i think three weeks is I used to always say two, but I think three is a little bit better. It just gives you more time to practice. I think one of the dangers that I see with a lot of people is actually trying to come in too soon, but they haven't had a chance to go and practice it enough. Right, okie dokie. And um, just overall then, for me this year, given what you understand of my swing in these first two lessons, what are the sort of goals that we're working towards sort of short term and long term, very briefly? Okay, so I, would, I would consider a really good season to be like, Finishing somewhere near a two handicap, I think that would be a really successful year. You would have played really, really well. And realistically? No, I think that, I'll be, that could be done. Okay, you know, okay. no changes. You know, you, you were already, you know, you got down to 4.9 last year, so it's only some things in the swim that stop that. Yeah, you know, inconsistency that. has caused so me to creep up. you've got the ability to do that. So, you know, if you, I'm not saying that you finish on two, but you could finish on a two point something, so between two and three. 2.5 2 and 3, that would be a really, really good year. But you, you should be aiming for trying to get down to 3 handicap by the end of the year. That sounds awesome. Let's hope we can achieve it. Definitely. Thanks, Dan. Pleasure. Right, I'm back after my second lesson with Dan Whitaker. It was a very long and technical lesson, so if you're still with me by now, congratulations, I know exactly how you feel. It was very physically and mentally demanding, and it was really, the learning curve has now, you know, increased exponentially trying to stack new things on top of the uh, things I learnt in my first lesson. As a result, I'm going to have to structure my, pr my practice routine going forward much better, and two main things that I'm going to take away from this lesson today are, first of all, from a practical point of view, I'm just going to go to the rain with a wedge and a seven iron, get a hundred balls, and really just focus on my body positions, the feelings, check in the mirror, front and down the line that I'm in the correct positions, and only then hit the golf ball. The second aspect of the practice is to disassociate myself emotionally from the result of the shot. So as Dan touched upon, when I hit a shot, if it's a good shot, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good swing. And equally, when I hit a bad shot, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad swing. During the lesson, we actually only hit about 15 real shots. And the reason why is we were concentrating so much on sequencing and body positions and manipulating me into the correct positions, checking them on the video and so on. We probably made about 150 to 200 practice swings. I was struggling to begin the backswing in many cases, and it's because we were focusing on so many different aspects to the swing. So I'll just talk through very quickly all of the things that we were covering. Hopefully that's in focus. So, from the setup position, the first thing we were working on was the left wrist set. Then, obviously, the deep hip turn to prevent me swaying 
to get my left shoulder behind the ball. Then at the top of the backswing, we were making sure that my right elbow was tucked in. Then, um, and also we were preventing my right knee from kicking out over my right foot um, during that backswing. Then for the transition, we were concentrating on getting the left hip and left knee sliding more towards the target. So rather than standing up out of it, sliding more towards the target and keeping my belly button in front of my sternum towards the target during that transition. Um, and only then were we able to even think about a follow through or hitting the golf ball. Thinking about so many things at once was making it very difficult for me to even begin a backswing. Sometimes I'll be stood there for five or ten seconds just to kind of go through in my mind what I was trying to do and get the sequencing straight before I could even take the club away. Of those 15 shots, 12 were probably the unmentionable S word and um, the others three only one of them actually made it into the video being worthy of the track man data. It just goes to show why the result of the shot at this point during the practice doesn't really matter. The other thing that I would take out of the video was the quality of the video itself. I had my GoPro Hero 5 with me, the sound wasn't particularly good, and it wasn't particularly bright or pin sharp. So I do apologise if it was a bit difficult to watch. Um, I will obviously have to try and figure out the settings for that as I go forward, and I'll try and do a better job next time. Otherwise, thank you very much indeed for watching the video and for sticking with it. Please do subscribe, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Please do leave a comment in the comment section below. If it hadn't have been for somebody mentioning my hip sway, I wouldn't have brought it up to Dan. He would have noticed it anyway, no doubt, but it did mean that I could put it forward to him and any comments that might even be perceived as negative to do with my swing, they will hopefully help me in the long run, raising faults and giving me things to think about. So I, I do appreciate them either way. So again, please do subscribe. Thanks very much for watching and hopefully I'll see you in one of my future videos. Bye-bye.